Okay, so we're going to start talking about this idea of facts, truth, and beauty, and how they're related and why we care about these things. Um, but first, again, if we were in person, this would be a lot more fun. In the in the the classes I've taught in person, I've taught this class uh, two or three times before, and this discussion is always great. What is truth, and why do we care about it? Um, there are lots of different de definitions of truth and what truth is, and people have been debating this for millennia. Um, knowing what truth is and what is something that is true versus false. And so um, what I want to do briefly is kind of go over some things that people consider truth. Um, some truth is like the core principles of the universe. We have physics, we have physical laws, we have gravity. Um, we know about dark matter. We know about all of this, these scientific laws, and those things are truth. Um, they are immutable unless you're near a black hole or something, and they, they are things that don't change. We know how the universe works, and so that is truth. And so if you're a hard scientist um, working in physics or biology or chemistry, you're looking for unchanging truths that are out there. But that's not the only type of truth. If you're interested in social science, which I'm assuming most of you are because you're in um, the Andrew Young School of Public Policy, you might want to find the truth of um, whether or not social programs work. If you want to see if Medicaid has an effect on poverty or on health, um, there's social trends out there that exist and you can find them. You can find the truth in them um, through statistics and through program evaluation and other methods for, for finding truth um, through social science methods. Um, truth can also be something transcendental. It can be something that's part of the human experience where we feel truth. Um, this often happens when we, not necessarily when we're looking at like scientific things, but if you are in nature or if you listen to powerful music um, that kind of moves your soul, um, whether or not you believe in like a religious concept of the soul, there's something that moves people to do something else. Um, the whole field of the humanities was invented during the Renaissance um, as kind of a counter movement against like the Catholic Church and, and Christianity and it was emphasizing the human desire for excellence and the human desire for becoming better um, outside of any divinity, outside of any religious context. It's just raising the importance of humans because we need truth and we're trying to find some sort of humanistic truth that's out there. And so that that's also a form of truth. Um, reality, this gets into like if you're dreaming, that's not truth. Um, but if you're alive and talking to people, that is potentially something that is true and real. Um, so truth is kind of this wishy-washy concept that encompasses all of these things. It's some sort of weird essence that we're trying to attain um, through science, through art, through other methods. Um, and what's interesting is that there are lots of different methods for finding truth. I've already mentioned a few with art and stuff, and this, this we'll get back to this in a minute. Um, but one common way of looking at, at finding truth is through science, um, is looking through, like using the scientific method, um, analyzing things, posing hypotheses, testing them, making sure that there are unchanging truths. We know gravity works because apples fall from trees and they fall from any tree in the world. And so we can recreate that experiment and we know that gravity is a thing and it's science finds all truth. And so Neil deGrasse Tyson here, he's a, a popular science communicator. He directs a museum in New York. Um, he's very heavy leaning towards this idea of science being the source of all truth. Um, and so this, this older tweet here, he says that science is true whether or not you believe in it, which is true. Like if you don't think gravity is a thing, um, you're still going to fall off a cliff because it's still true. But the danger with looking at science like this, um, that it's the only thing that is true, is you fall into this trap called scientism, where you over rely on science and you don't think that there's value in any other um, field of inquiry, any other um, human approach to life. The only way you're going to find truth is through science and hard science. And that's not actually um, true. Um, so Science is not the only way to find truth. There's a whole bunch of different ways, most rooted in the humanities here. You can find truth through art and through music and literature and religion and nature. Um, all of these are different methods for finding different essences of kind of this, this intangible, loosey-goosey concept of truth. Um, and the interesting thing about this is none of these 
things, um, none of these methods for finding truth deal with raw facts. Art is created from an artist's mind. Music is created from a musician's mind. So if you look here, um, nothing on this page is factual. Um, but all of these things reveal deeper truths in the humanities sense. Um, so over here we have Cosette, who's a character from Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. Um, that whole book is, is fake. None of those people existed. Um, but the experiences of all of the different characters in Les Miserables teach us about the human experience. They te teach us about suffering. They teach us about justice. They teach us about forgiveness and love and friendship and a whole bunch of other deep human concepts that, that have truth in it. Um, but none of it's real. King Lear, um, right here, he was invented by Shakespeare, um, was not a real person. But his story still teaches us truth about um, backstabbing relatives and ungrateful children and, and daughters that still love him, uh, love you even if you go crazy. Um, so we still learn kind of deeper truths from that. Or we have here Beethoven's Ninth Symphony um, that has, um, it's kind of overplayed often in movies and stuff, but it also has deep significance um, as kind of a powerful song that is, that is played to, to stir human emotions. Um, after the Berlin Wall fell in the, in the late 1980s, early 1990s, um, there was unification between East and West Germany, and this became kind of the theme song of that reunification. And it has powerful, the, the powerful chorus and the whole swell of the orchestra. Um, it moves you um, and it teaches you more about kind of the truth behind the human experience. It doesn't teach you about gravity, but it's still revealing some sort of truth even without facts. And so the reason we're talking about all of this here is that it's coming to this core idea here that facts by themselves are not truth. Um, you can have raw facts, um, you can have equations and stuff, but that's not necessarily truth all by itself. And if you live in a world where um, you can find truth um, in things that are not factual, like Les Miserables, again, none of those people existed, um, but you can still find truth. The way that works, if you don't have facts, I argue, is through beauty. If something is beautiful, um, if there's aesthetic qualities to it, then it causes some sort of human reaction and, and helps us find truth. Um, even if there's raw facts, if we make those facts beautiful, it enhances the, the qualities of 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 the facts and it helps the truth of it and it helps us remember that and learn it better um, and communicate it better. So beauty is essential to communicating these different types of truths. Um, this is even true for science. Um, so this book here is by um, a scientist named Frank Wilczek um, where he goes through and he shows how all sorts of natural physical laws um, and mathematical principles all follow kind of aesthetics of beauty. Um, and the laws of physics fit well with different um, standards of beauty um, and design principles and, and other things. It's a, it's a really interesting book. You should all read it someday um, when you're not taking this class. Um, but it, it connects kind of this idea of having um, deep design and deep um, aesthetic qualities throughout nature that enhance our understanding of scientific knowledge. And so that, that's important. Um, where this is most easily visible in this idea of, of connecting truth and beauty is the world of rhetoric, um, which people have been, again, arguing about for millennia, what makes a good speech, what makes good writing. Um, and so here, back in the, with ancient Greek philosophers, they created this distinction between what is called logos and lexis. And if you remember from like your freshman English class, you talked about this back then. Um, so logos or res, which is what the Latin philosophers created, or this essence or content, is kind of the underlying metaphysical meaning of something. So if you're reading a book, it's what the author intends to get across. Um, if you're looking at a piece of artwork, it's what the artist wants to, to encapsulate in the art. If you're making a data visualization, it's the thing that you want to communicate to your audience. That's the, the essence of it, the res, the logos. The lexis, or the verba, or the structure, or the form, is how you actually do that, how you communicate um, your core 
piece of truth that you want to get across to your audience. And so if you're an artist, you might want to communicate loss or grieving. And so you're going to do that with specific um, design rules and specific art rules, uh, standards of beauty and um, other symbolic forms that let you get across that deeper concept of grief and of mourning. Um, if you're doing a data visualization, you have some sort of core nugget of truth that you want to communicate, and you're going to follow specific rules um, following the grammar of graphics and other data or data design and graphic design principles to be able to communicate that. And as long as you do that well, if you can make the form match the content and help enhance that content, the combination of those two is what creates truth. Um, and this is why we can find truth in things like Les Miserables. Um, the underlying essence or the content of Les Miserables is these deeper concepts of forgiveness and justice. Um, but the reason we can understand that is because it is done in the form of a novel. You know, it follows specific aesthetic guidelines for a novel and it communicates beauty. And so we can understand the truth because of the combination of those two things. So art is how we combine content and form to communicate these core truths to different audiences. And so being able to match content with form or switch around the forms to uh, different modes, you can have art forms, you can have music forms, you can have literature forms, all sorts of different forms to communicate the same nugget of truth that's in the content. And as long as you can do that, um, using the principles of beauty, that is what allows you to communicate better and reach an audience. So to kind of summarize this idea here, um, truth is not necessarily something that is factual. Um, you don't need facts to be able to communicate truth. This does not mean you can just make up data um, in your plots and kind of make up whatever you want in data visualizations. That goes against kind of the, the rules of the Lexis part, the form. You're not supposed to do that. Um, facts are important for that, for that realm. But the facts can be enhanced by using the aesthetics of data visualization and the aesthetics of uh, graphic design. Using those correctly kind of enhances the truth and communicates it better to your audience. And so that, that's what we want to do is focus on the design aspect um, so that the truth is stronger and clearer. Um, and so what I argue um, is that facts require beauty to be true. Um, just having raw facts is not enough. We care about the beauty. And that's not just something I'm inventing. That's philosophers and, and designers and um, scholars have been researching this and studying this for millennia. And this is kind of the humanities side of the data visualization world is we care about beauty. So um, that will set us up for the next section is how is this all related to data?